Happy birthday! Ah, yeah, it, it do be that. I, I mean, so from time of recording, your birthday's in two days, but two I won't days. talk to you that day. So happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, I'm good. Yeah, I'm Brad. That blue weird anime in the BB. Yeah. And I'm going to be 25. <laughs> yeah, you're old now. I'm old now. You can legally rent a car in the state. I can. I can. I think that's my last. That's the last thing next to like. Getting a senior discount, you know, like I think that's the last age bracket. I I legitimately think it is. Yeah, because <laughs> like it oh. used to be like, oh, I can drink in the states, and then it was, yeah, because it was like fourteen, I could get my uh, learner's license. Sixteen, I could get my full license. Eighteen, I could drink in Alberta. Nineteen, I could drink anywhere in Canada. Twenty-one, I could drink in the states. 25 and smoke in the states. Drink and smoke in the states. 25 is um, renting a car. And I think the next yep. one, I think the next one's the senior discount. Yeah, it, it literally is. Yeah. <laughs> I could have gotten away with a senior discount this week. Oh? Did I send you my Halloween costume? No. So we were people from the Sandlot. Have you seen the Sandlot, the baseball film? Uh, no. So, yeah, we were characters from the Sandlot, and here is, um, here's what I'm going to look like as an old man. Okay. I have the photo in here somewhere. Hang on, I gotta find <laughs> it. It's in my phone. This is what I get for, like, keeping my pictures clean. Like, I'm never one to delete text, max- text messages, but my goodness, if you give me the opportunity to delete photos, I'm going to do it in a heartbeat. Hmm. Just because if I no longer have use for it, what do I need it for? For reference. Yeah, on so the there's, Ooh, there's dude. that one. And here's the group photo. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I look like old. <laughs> but, yeah, those may or may not make the Instagram. Who yeah. who knows? I I may or may not feel like it. You got like skin it. for an old guy. Right? Right? Yeah. I, I mean, screw the eczema. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, let's get all of the chemicals and put them on the most sensitive part of my skin. Yeah, because it's literally only on my, like, in my hair yeah, and on my face where my beard grows, where my eczema acts up. (laughs) And that's where I put the hair color. So you know what? Everything's fine. I'm fine. We're all fine. Everyone's fine. But what have you been up to this Ah. week? Um, I have been with my parents. Oh, yeah, that's right. They did come and visit. Yeah, they came to visit. So my, my dad had a conference. He has a conference here in Toronto every single year. And normally mm-hmm. he just, like, hangs out at the airport and then goes home and then complains about how shitty Toronto is because he's never actually seen the city. And uh, <laughs> um, I feel like that's such a dad thing to do. <laughs> I, I could see it. That's something yeah. I would do. Yeah. And um, and anyway, so he, I finally dragged him out into the city this time. And my mom came. And they came and saw me at work. And I showed them the school. And um, we went out to the lake because I'm only, like, I'm pretty close to Lake Ontario. Um, Mm -hmm. And so we went to go see Lake Ontario and we went to a couple, like, a flower garden and there was a tiny little airport. So my dad was watching the planes. And um, yeah, it was a really good time. Just, like, had a chill time. And uh, yeah, it was fun. I enjoyed my time with them. Didn't get much sleep at all. Spent two nights in their hotel room with them. And then I had to go to work <laughs> and mm. crashed. <laughs> yeah. It was fun, though. Well, it's good that you got to spend time with the fam. Yeah, I haven't seen him in months in person, so it was good to good to reconnect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we did a fun exercise in my watercolor class. You know when you're a kid and you did that thing where, like, you would fold a piece of paper in three and somebody would draw a head and then draw the lines a little bit far down so the next person could connect on a body. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did that in my painting class, but without it necessarily being a figure, it could be literally anything. We just had to have lines connected, and it was stupid fun. Nice. Have, that sounds like fun. I have pictures of the ones that I did. Ooh, send. I want to see. I will send. Uh, do, 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 do. So many things. The first one I send you, I did the middle section. 
the second one oh. I did the bottom section, and the last one I did the top section. Fancy, love it. Yeah, they were just fun. It was a fun little experiment, and I think if you have friends, if you have friends, if you have IRL friends, or even <laughs> online friends, um, this would be a super fun thing to do. Um, and and it was really fun to to do in class. So. Um, yeah, all you do is you get a long piece of paper, or if you're doing it digitally, then you could do three separate images, and you draw something, uh, usually with a time limit, and then whatever you are done, you then connect on the next section um, by just drawing little guidelines down into the next person's section. So if you're doing it on a piece of paper, it'd be the middle section then. Um, digitally you can just then make a new image layer it on top and then match your lines and then send them that so it's a blank sheet except for those tiny little guidelines at the top for where they can connect then they do their drawing with the same time limit and then um, they do their guidelines for the third person and um, yeah and then you reveal it to see what you guys all came up with and there are some very strange coincidences that happen like color palettes that started off in one way and then reconnect to another way or themes that go throughout um, fun monsters creations I don't know it's a good time you should do it seems like it'd be a fun time yeah. I'm very very intrigued by this yeah <laughs> and it was one thing that I did as a, like in primary school when I was a kid and I never thought that I would do it in actual art school but it was great fun oh that's cool yeah I've been I've been working on my improv. Oh. Because we're planning on starting up an in person D and D campaign here soon. Mm -hmm. So part of that involved um so right before we sat down to record, Walker came in and dropped like five hundred dollars worth of D and D books on my desk because mm -hmm. we went out and bought them at a steal. Mm-hmm. We got it all for like 120 bucks. Ooh. So for $60 a piece, we got like $500 worth of D&D &D books, dice, sets, like the whole nine yards. That's sick. So it it's very nice. Like, it's a very nice set of stuff. The lady just didn't have time for it anymore. Yeah. So she's just trying to get rid of the stuff. So now I'm working on that. I've been having a great time just forcing myself to do more improv with stupid shit and whatnot it's been it's been fun it's been interesting yeah and now i got a shit ton of D D stuff yeah yeah that's gonna be fun that's gonna be so fun. yeah are you gonna stream i'm looking any forward of it to it or, um, uh it? probably not i'm probably gonna do audio recordings mm -hmm. most likely just for note taking yeah and stuff but it will be recorded in some shape form or fashion but i don't know how much like actual content I could make out of it. I know how big D and D stuff is, but I don't. I don't know. If there's do, anything that would come out of it. Well, you could do little short form like TikTok videos, so just out in context D and D quotes or something out of context. I could do that. That would actually be hilarious. Yeah, so I might like... have to. I'll keep that in mind because that knowing the group that I'm going to be playing with, there's going to be a lot of those. Yeah, that would be super like fun. Like the pure innuendo and bullshit that's going to be thrown around. Yeah. It's going to be great. I've already gotten some of their character concepts back and whatnot. <laughs> so it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. It's nice. going to be stupid, but yeah. it's going to be so much fun. Yeah, you should so do that. A little out of context TikToks or something. Yes, I would. I will actually have to do that. That will probably be the only content to ever make it onto my TikTok because I've gotten around to doing absolutely nothing with that other than watching TikToks. It's so addicting. <laughs> yeah. It really is. Uh, all I'm going to say is it's nice that I got a phone with a much better battery life. Mm-hmm. Mate, so I took my charge or I took my phone off charge yesterday yeah. at six AM. Yeah. Yesterday. It is now five twenty four the day after and I'm still at twenty six percent. Nice. This shit's nice. I like it. Big fan. Yeah. I'm hoping to get a new phone um when I go back home at Christmas. I don't want to get one now because it might change my phone number because I'm in a different province. So Oh yeah, that is a very valid thing yeah. that could happen. So, when I go home for Christmas, I'll try and get a new one, because my screen is fudged. What did you do? I dropped it face down on gravel. That'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> That'll 100% yeah. do it. It had a case on it and everything, even a screen protector, but gravel. Yeah, no, that, that's definitely not yeah. gonna... <laughs> screen protector or not, it, it definitely no. fugged. Yeah. 
Yeah. But have, have I done anything else that I have or have not sent you? I got new figures. Did I send you those? You did. Well, you send me. You sent. You send me. You sended me. Sent. <sighs> oh, the Ren but, figure. Yes. I sent you that. Yeah. That is um. That's included with your birthday package. So Ooh. happy birthday. Thank you. So, but outside of that, I also let me find those photos. I'm gonna have to recover those out of my thing but i bought these for me so come to find out there is a comic book shop here local that i was not aware of Mm -hmm. and so i found out that they have legit japanese import figures and they sell them for like 25 26 bucks oh okay so um your boy got um best girl and chica on top of rin oh those are nice right like they're so high quality for like 25 26 bucks yeah like i'm very pleased with this do they have other faces and hands and stuff or are they just as is oh they're just as is um they had some that were interchangeable Mm -hmm. so i mean they there were definitely options they're really good though i like them yeah and like i said 25 26 bucks like i it just blows my mind like we're actually getting good anime figures here for cheap now i don't have to break my fucking pockets to get figures right (laughs) makes me happy makes me very happy yeah you know what else makes me happy uh devil is a part-timer the second season finally coming to arrive to us after a million years Yes, after fucking, I think, what, eight or nine years away? It, finally came back. I believe it came out for season one. Yes, so nine years later, we finally got it. Yeah. Although, you know what's a true missed opportunity that we should have done this week? What? SAO. Yes. Because today is the official quote unquote launch day of Sword Art Online. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, like the canon end show release date yeah. is November 6th. So today is the official release date. Okay, so with that, let's pose the question. You got your release day um, new game console. You stick it on. You get transported. What, What? first of all, character design, Your what? all of that jazz, where are you going? And second of all, um what's what you doing if you get trapped in a video game so we have had this discussion prior of if the sao incident were to become a real thing yeah if sword art online was to legitimately be released and we knew going into it what the drawbacks quote unquote would be for such a thing, I would still do it in a fucking heartbeat, without a shadow of a doubt. If I'm going to die, I'm going to die doing something that I love, which is playing video games. Yeah. Should I die? I love RPGs. I love difficult RPGs. So I would gladly do it and may or may not die. But as far as jumping in and character creation... If anybody has seen me stream RPGs, no, you know I'm going to make a girl, and I'm going to (laughs) be hot as fuck. (laughs) I would be incredibly tempted to make a guy, just because, like, you want to know what it's like being inside the other person's body, you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, no joke. Like, regardless of how much of a joke and a meme your name has become because of the body swapping. Yeah. That shit would be real if something like that were to come about. <laughs> yeah. Like, like I want to know what it's like to be... First of all, I want to know what it's like to be, like, four foot. But I also want to know what it's like to be, like, six <laughs> foot seven, you know? Oh, I, I thought you were making a joke about your own height, like taking a dig at me uh, for making fun uh, of your height. <laughs> no, I know. I already know what it's like to be four foot in that case. Uh, <laughs> um... But yeah, I want to know, I want to, I would definitely change my height. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know whether I would go smaller or bigger, though. I mean, if you look at the case of SAO Alternative, yeah. going small kind of has its perks. Yeah, I mean, like. You'd be quick. I wouldn't mind being a little halfling or something, like, that would be fun. Mm-hmm. But um, also just being a giant, muscular dude that's like you know, 400 pounds of just beef. Yep. I want to know what that's like, too. Right? Yeah. Like, it would be, like, ah. Yeah. 
I, uh, I do it. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, just give me a real SAO incident. Yeah. Fuck it. And just, hair just at give... least butt length. Minimum. Oh, like, no joke. I would go, like, full pink hair with, like, the drill bit ribbon yeah. hair. Yeah. Like, I would design that shit. Like, <laughs> I would go as, quote, unquote, kawaii yeah. as possible. Like, I would be cute as fuck, and I would have a great time slaying wolves and slimes mm-hmm. and everything else. Yeah. Would I die? Maybe. Who knows? Would it be worth it? Yes. I want anime glasses <laughs> that I can push up when I need to. You can actually get those. Yeah, I want them. They're a real thing. You can buy them whenever you push them up on your nose. They light up to obscure I your want eyes. I them. I want them as well. <laughs> I, You know, I'm probably going to buy those for Halloween next year and just dress up like a fucking nerd. Honestly, who needs and them wear for those? just Halloween? Have them just to cosplay in life. I mean, sure. Why not? Yeah. Just like <laughs> Somebody it, right? says something and you have a retort, just push them up your nose and be like, hey. Yeah. There's a, a black pink pop-up shop mm-hmm. here in Toronto right now. And the amount oh, of people that I have seen walking around decked out in black pink um, fan dumb clothing. What is mm-hmm. it called? Merch. That's the word. Yes, um, merch. And they look sick. And I'm just like, I want to be like that. I want to be... <laughs> <laughs> That's a life goal. I want to be, like, obsessed with something where I'm just, like, walking down the street with a black, pink baseball cap, backpack, chain on backpack, hoodie, pants, I don't know, whatever else, anything, completely decked out, head to toe. I'm... I mean, the other hottest thing going around is Taylor Swift released her new album, yeah. so you could be a... Uh... Fuck! What is her fan base called? Swifties. Yeah, yeah. My my fucking girlfriend will kill me over that. God damn it! But like, our Western celebrities don't do that. They don't have a pop up shop of of t- Swifty merch. You know. But they should. They should. They need to get like, on that's that. That's so much missed marketing. It fully is. Yeah. Like especially if you're going to go on tour there. Yeah. Like, Taylor Swift just announced her first tour in years. So, therefore, in all of those cities, like, especially near the venue, like, a week or two beforehand, do a pop-up store. They had cotton candy at the black pink one, okay? They walk... Is it black and pink? It's pink. Like, hot pink. Like, not cotton candy pink, like, pink pink. Nice. Yeah. And and they were walking past the cafe, and we were going, why is there cotton... Why do people have... Where is they getting that candy? How do we get some? And then I saw it, and I was like, it's the freaking black pink pop-up shop. I did you it. go get cotton candy? I didn't. It was cold, Boo. and I wanted to go home. I am disappointed. <laughs> I had also had, like, <laughs> three cookies that day. Like, shot it's cookies. It's fine. Okay. okay. It's fine. Okay. That little bit of extra sugar is not going to kill you. Uh, well, yeah, okay, fair. <laughs> and, hey, if anything, dissolve it in your coffee. I have, oh yeah, there's um, too many syrups on, on hand to choose from at the coffee shop, and it's bad for my teeth, for my health, for my life in general. <laughs> but worth it. <laughs> it's so good. So good. We got, like, Irish cream, hazelnut, we have uh, macadamia nut syrup, we have toasted almond, we have salted caramel, vanilla, we have um, peppermint. Uh, I just straight cocoa. There's like, <laughs> there's so many more. White chocolate. So, yeah. So my favorite from our local coffee shop, yeah. the next town over, is burnt sugar. Ooh. I don't know how they make it, but it is the most delicious thing I have ever had in a coffee. We also have real Canadian maple syrup. This doesn't surprise me. No. (laughs) None of this strikes me as just like new (laughs) development. (laughs) Seriously though, try a latte with maple syrup and cinnamon. Frickin' good. Mm, You know what? I feel like I would have to come to Canada to try that. I feel like around here it just wouldn't be that great. It would have to be like as authentic as possible. Yeah, I'll have to send you some. Oh, speaking. Okay, so the tiny, first of all, 
rant moment for a second. The perfectly uh-huh. perfect family run tiny corner shop that was a half a block away from my apartment is now for lease and they're gone. What? Yes. Yeah, so I went in there the other day and they were having a huge sale. And I was like, oh, this is sick. And I, and it was like they were selling everything for real cheap. So I was like, okay, fair. And I and I thought that they were doing like uh, inventory clean out so that then they could do a deep clean of the shop. You know, it's kind of a quiet time. That's my that's when my brain went. I was like, oh, okay, they're cleaning because like I was watching them doing clean. So I was like, okay, they're just trying to sell off all their old stock and then they'll restock, right? Mm-hmm. And they were selling. I got first of all, I got two bottles of maple syrup for one ninety nine a piece. So if that didn't tell nice. me that something was up, like I should have known, but. Because maple syrup is expensive. But yes, that was a great deal. And um, um, and then I go back the next day and shop's closed. For lease sign in the window. I'm like, I would have bought at least four more jars of maple syrup had I known. But like, yeah, still, I'm pissed. I hope another little grocery store moves into the location because it's perfect for me and I'm selfish. But also, what are the family going to do now? Like, it was a little family-run shop and it's gone. So. There's no telling, but that that's sad. Yeah. That, that's very sad. Yeah. Hopefully you do get another little corner shop. I hope so, but they gave me free Pocky there. Bother and boo, how dare they close? Honestly, like, that's just rude. You can't give a girl free Pocky and then, like, close. Exactly. How dare they? That's like how fucking dare they? getting my hopes up for, like, no fucking reason and stuff. Like, I feel like I got, like, cheated over or something. Yeah. Emotionally manipulated. Rude. Rude. Very fuckers. rude. It was green tea pocky as well. Oh, that's my favorite. Yeah, see? Like I had the an emotional pocky's attachment. The matcha the best. Yeah. I had emotional <laughs> attachment to that store. Uh that's bullshit. Right. I'm furious. If y'all are listening to this, reopen your fucking stool. Yeah. I I don't care if I am your soul merchant. Like I'm your sole customer. <laughs> I will keep you in business. I, I, I bo- Probably not. I will definitely not, but I will do my best. <laughs> I, I only bought like lettuce, milk, and eggs from there, but you know, occasionally I buy a bar of chocolate or some salsa. Like Maybe that's why they went out of business, giving away too much pocky. <laughs> Honestly, no. <laughs> uh, oh, that's, that's sad. Their pocky sad day. had a hole in them. i wanted to keep that silence as long and awkward as possible (laughs) but i cracked i couldn't keep it in (laughs) oh Uh, my god anyway let's these episodes have just devolved into fucking laughing fits they have honestly it's been like 20 minutes we haven't even talked about shit so let's let's go back into it yeah, we tried, but then I had to talk about the missed SAO opportunity, yeah. and then we just fucking dive bombed from there. Bombed. But yes, Devil is a Part-Time at Season 2. Yeah, it has finally regraced our presence. Hooray! Hooray! So, The Devil is a Part-Timer Season 2 was animated by 3 Hertz. They are not the same studio that did the first season. However, they are the same studio that did SAO Alternative, Gun Gal Online. So it's kind of fitting we talked about SAO for this one as well. I totally planned that. Yeah, absolutely planned. <laughs> <laughs> it was directed by Daisuke Chikushi and ran for 12 episodes from July 14th to September 29th of 2022 for a total of 12 episodes. Yes. Um, yeah, it's right Your turn. What? Huh? Oh, never mind. I was saying, your turn. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's rated a PG-13, and it is a 6.68 out of 10 on my anime list, or 3.57 out of 5, or 7.14 out of 10 on Anime Planet, giving it an average of 6.91 out of 10. So, nice. yes, nearly a 7. Um, and it has a high drop rate, but um, I, uh, yeah, okay, so it's got a drop rate of 12.22%, which is 
quite high, especially considering the fact that it is a second season. There are a couple of reasons why I think this is the case, though. First thing is that the studio, the animation studio has changed, so the animation style has changed. If you are not willing, like, if you're a diehard fan of the first season, you go to watch this one, and you start the first episode and realize that the animation has changed, it could be a reason for some people to click off before giving it a actual chance and watching through. Second season, second reason is that um, it is pretty new out. It just finished airing here in September 29th. So some people may not have updated their um, anime planet sheets yet to, to say that they've finished watching it. Um, other people or... Um, uh, other people might not have logged that they have watched it, so we're going to give it time, and at the end of the year, I will refresh that and we'll see again. Um, I do also think that there is an element of the first season kind of being a bit of a cult classic. Like, people, kind of the same way in the animation style, the actual, actual storyline is so beloved by a lot of people that if they have, in I feel like people have incredibly high expectations for this second season, and the reality of the situation is, is that this show is designed to be a lot of fun and just casual viewing. Even the first season was designed that way, the second season is also designed that way, so if you have in your mind this intense plot that you want it to follow, um, or you've, you know, you've had a fair few years, you've, you've imagined your own storyline or whatever, um, there's a high chance that this will not follow that or meet those expectations because it is just meant to be kind of a fun, dumb story. It's not deep. Um, there's a good chance that people could be disappointed with that, which is why I think we're seeing that in the drop rate. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, it's been nine years, so I I fully understand the cult classic part of it because the internet exploded Yes. over it. But at the same time, it was a ton of fun. Yeah, and I think if you go into it with expectations of just watching it for fun, having a good time, I enjoyed the first season, I want to watch the second, that kind of viewing, you'll have a great time. If you go yeah. into this wanting it to be, you know, best of the best, continuing off exactly like the first season, you're going to be disappointed because they can never meet your expectations because they don't know your mind. Mm -hmm. I feel like... And this is just for me. Mm -hmm. I felt like it lived up to my expectations yeah. because it, like, I, it just played off the first season so well. Like, it picks up right where it left off. It threw a wrench in the plans, for sure, with some of the stuff that we're going to get into whenever we actually talk about the show. Mm -hmm. But it just added a whole new element of bananas, I guess is the way to yeah. put it. Like, it's just a whole new wrench into the plans. It just adds more hilarity to every situation it possibly can. Yes. Yeah. Um. I, I also really enjoyed it. I think it was a great season. I think that it was just as entertaining as the first season was. Um, you get to see all of the quirks of the characters. I did find the animation style a little bit jarring at times. Um... I think that that has a combination of it being with a slightly smaller, well, a smaller studio that um, has, I won't say, uh, they've kind of developed a specific style, but also I feel like they're still kind of playing around trying to find a very unique style, and I feel like um, it worked in some scenes in um, in The Devil is a Part-Timer, but also some scenes I found, like, things to be just slightly off i think for me they did exactly what they should have done mm -hmm. i think if they had started out like if they had pulled a one punch man and started off trying to copy the other studio style to begin with yeah. and then tried to like shift it towards their own i think that would have been a bad move yeah starting with their own style and continuing on with it. Yeah. Like, at first, I was like, I don't know how I feel about this animation style, but it grew on me because it's cute yeah. in a way. Like, I I will rag a lot of stuff for poor animation, but if the show's for laughs and the show is meant to be a laugh, then at the end of the day, I can forgive, like, less polished-ish animation. Mm -hmm. But also, I think it kind of fit. Like, the smoother lines and everything, it didn't... It didn't bother me, if that makes sense. Yeah, like, I, I I, agree with that, actually. I like the fact that they started off with their own animation um, immediately. 
Um, I just think that it, it does, yeah, I think it just needs a little bit of polishing here and there, a little bit of refinement, and I think that just comes with time as studios make more and more animes and they get a bigger team or a team that's more familiar with each other or, um, you know, they just find their own footing. But I feel like there was a lot of pressure on them to do, um, to do a really good job to make this because of the amount of wait time, because of the amount of press that this was getting, because of the, you know, the the expectations of the fans. I think they did a really, Mm. really good job with that level of pressure on them. Well, I think also too, we've kind of become a little bit spoiled. Yeah. With like really good animation over the past few seasons Mm -hmm. or things that we've watched, like licorice recoil being done by a one pictures was extremely polished, even though like the animation styles can be kind of similar with the rounder edges and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But A1 Pictures, of course, bigger studio, more money, all that other stuff. So they can, like, do a lot more detail. Mm -hmm. Whereas I feel like even the first season of The Devil's a Part-Timer did not have that much detail. Like, it was still just more or less like a gag anime with good stories. Yeah. So I think, like, again, it was a little jarring. But again, for me, like, I will 100% give it a pass because it... It was funny. Yeah, fully. The jokes were consistent. The jokes landed. Um, some of them were really dumb. They, it captured my attention. Overall, the second season is great. Did you take my advice and watch it dubbed, perchance? I did not. I watched it subbed because I'm bad. Uh, I'm going to highly recommend <laughs> you go back and watch this dub. Okay, more jokes. Like... D- <laughs> I I watched it dubbed like epi- like week by week as it was coming out. I watched it subbed week to week and then 2 weeks later like the dub started airing. Yeah. So I was watching it through. So once the dub started, I was watching two episodes a week. Mate. And I watched it dubbed the whole time like refreshing it for myself. Yeah. The shit slaps, yeah. dubbed, like, oh my god, the jokes just hit so much better. Okay. <laughs> like, in the episode where they're going to the farm and they're talking about, like, the local legends and whatnot. Yeah. Ashia was talking, <laughs> oh my god, so he was talking about how, like, their souls are, like, <laughs> Like pulled from them out of their ass, but instead of calling it an ass to keep it child friendly, they call it <laughs> they called it a chocolate pocket. Oh, I was crying. <laughs> this it's just everything hit, hit so different. Like they almost had free reign with it, I guess, with how they did it. Yeah. And it was just hilarious. Like, I had a brilliant fucking time yeah. with all of it. The dub. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Oh. <laughs> Hands down, one of my favorite dubs in a very long time. Okay. Good to know. Sorry, I'm, I'm crying I, I again thinking back. about all this shit. <laughs> I will go back and watch it and keep you posted. Um, oh, my God. But yeah, please, okay. Please do. So... Before we check on those spoiler chicken hats, I will just do an overview, but as Brad said, it's pretty much a continuation from where we left off on the um, first season. If you ha- if you don't know what we're talking about with Devil is a Part-Timer and you're just listening to one of our episodes because you like us, then thank you very much. Why are you doing that? No, nope. Yeah, sure. Okay, fine. Um, <laughs> we appreciate the we, listen, but also go watch the anime yeah, before like, you like, sit down and listen to a podcast go, about it. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know your <laughs> life, but sure. Um... um yeah, Devil is a Part-Timer is an anime that is based on the devil becoming a part-timer and work- working at, what is it, McRonald's? Yeah, um, McRonald's. Yep. And uh, it is a story of him making, and him and his his um, subordinates, him and his rivals, um, in both the uh, kind of mythical world and also just the human world, um, and his his life proceeding through. It is a comedy let's see exactly what it is listed as comedy fantasy romance and supernatural i would say that's accurate um yeah it slaps on all points yeah yeah it is um it's a pretty chill vibe it's a good watch 
I feel like it's one that you can kind of come back to watch casually or binge, so be aware if you tend to binge things, this might be one that you lose an afternoon to. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so this is just the continuation of that same storyline. We get a few new characters being introduced, including um, one new protagonist and one new antagonist that I feel like are going to be... Are, are they're vital parts of the story um, and then along with some others um, and then some smaller characters that we didn't really get to know much of last season that are being reintroduced um, this is more just development of all of the characters continuation of the storyline and uh, like I said uh, adding those new characters and new dynamics in and then um, yeah some pretty big um, story changes happening in the last couple episodes that are kind of setting us up for the next stage of story yes yeah so with that spoiler chicken hats on you have been warned Mal's got a kid <laughs> <laughs> with Emmy <laughs> yeah oh this is a plot development of huge proportions yes uh yeah <laughs> but oh my god <laughs> this show is brilliant like i wondered whenever they were bringing this out i'm like how could they possibly like add another wrench to the plans and continue to build yeah. on the comedy and then they throw in a kid <laughs> A kid, a baby that looks at both Mal and Emmy and says, Mama and Papa, and that is it. And everyone is very confused. And I feel bad for Porcio, who has just confessed her feelings and uh, doesn't really know where she stands and is now all of a sudden dealing with the fact that um, her, uh, her romantic interest now has a kid with his rival. Yeah, like his... What's the, like, sworn enemy, I guess, is yeah. the term I was looking for? Like, Emmy mm -hmm. wants to kill Mal, and Mal is just kind of indifferent on it because he's the devil and just wants to take over the world. <laughs> yes. And this plot point I thought was so clever because it completely cuts off Emmy's ability to kill him before her... Um, revenge plan ends up wavering towards the end mm -hmm. because she now her soul her when when Alice um, turns into her sword, she now can't kill Mao with her main weapon because of the relationship that Alice has to Mao. Right, yep. so like she kind of bites her nose off to spite her face originally, even before everything in her mind gets flipped upside down. Yep. Also, can we talk about how Gabriel is voiced by Dio? Oh. So every time Homie spoke, all I could sit there and think was, Ho, ho, Jotaro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it just tickled me to no end. And it also, I don't know if it's the actual voice actor or not for Dio, but there's a dude who goes around Japan has the exact, like, uses the exact same voice, goes through drive throughs and shit and orders as Dio. Yeah. And it just tickles me. Like, it just hits my funny bone to no end. Because I'm like, I want to do this shit. Yeah. <laughs> but just have such an iconic voice like that. But I don't know if you noticed in any of the comments or not, but as soon as Gabriel showed up, like, everybody could not shut up about it being Dio. <laughs> Do you, do you want to know um, who else he voices? Who? In uh, Kaguya-sama, he is Shirogane's father. Shirogane, the dad. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Shirogane, dad. Yeah. I guess it just didn't hit me as hard on that point just because it's no. Dio. But, oh, that makes yeah. sense. That makes so much I'm sense. Like, I'm looking at his whole repertoire now. Also, can can I talk about how sad I am for a minute? Okay. Rest in peace, Kaguya-sama, because as of two days ago, at time of recording, it's over. Oh, the last so The last chapter dropped on November 4th, and I am just now heartbroken. Although, I have oh. a statue of Chica, so I guess I'm not too awful sad. But at the same time, it's over. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sad day. He's Dojima from Food Wars? Yeah. Ah. Here's so quite a pedigree. I've forgotten. 
He's, uh, yeah, he's one punch man. Like, I'm, he was in Pokemon. Like, I'm seeing very, 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 um, uh, what's the word? Well-versed? Well-versed voice actor. Yeah, sure, we're gonna go with that. That's what I wanted. Cool. Um. But yeah, Gabriel wants to stop the plans and steal Alice Ramos. Yes. Yeah. But then Alice Ramos headbutts this man and turns into a sword because he broke Emmy's sword. And Alice Ramos is like, hmm, nom. Nom. Yes. Like literally bites the sword, becomes the sword. Yeah. And Mao thinks she's dead, but she's really not. And then it was sad, but then everybody was happy. Yeah. And while he was sad, he forgot the fact that they have to move out and that his work is being closed down for renovations. Yeah, so he's, we got a beach episode, even though it wasn't really a beach episode. They just had to go work on a beachfront. Yeah, it was a beach episode in the sense that they were on a beach, but, oh, we did get some bikini shots. Oh, yeah, that's right. I guess I kind of blocked that out. (laughs) Yeah. There was was too much plot for Brad to pay attention to the actual plot. I mean, not gonna lie, I watched this show for the comedy. I could care less about the plot itself. (laughs) The, oh, the plot, plot, not the that. story plot. <laughs> Which plot? Who lost the plot? Um, Food Wars? What? <laughs> uh-uh. Sorry, uh- we started talking about plot. Now my brain is like, hey, hey. <laughs> <Food> <laughs> uh, Just don't try those peanut butter covered squid tentacles. I'm sorry, did somebody say peanuts? I've been watching Spy Family week to week, so all I can think of is just Anya. Peanuts. <laughs> Peanuts. Oh, a girl came into my work dress as Anya. We also had Anya at the church trunk or treat on Monday. Yeah. Like, we had a Yor and Anya cosplay, and I was like, oh, I fucking yeah. love oh, yeah. it. Yeah. I was so happy. Like, as the Anya was walking by, I just went, waka walk. <laughs> <laughs> it was so cute. I had a great time. Aww. They were They were very happy. Aw, yeah, yeah, the girl was stoked that I recognized her cosplay um, at, at work because she had said that she had, it was like a, uh, she was at work and it was like a work event costume mm-hmm. party and nobody knew who she was and she had spent, she said she had spent three hours making the headpiece for Anya um, the night before and, and she was like, because I tried to find it and they don't, they don't sell them yet so I had to make it. And I was like, you look great. I recognized you right away. Like, don't worry if they don't get it. They're just lame. Yeah, and I think I was probably the only person at the trunk or treat that would have actually have recognized the cosplay. Yeah. So they didn't tell me I was the only one. I just kind of figured because, you know, South and church. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Therefore, I am a heathen amongst mortals, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> How dare you watch anime? How dare I watch I've anime? I've got the power of God and anime on my side. <laughs> yeah, I have two gods. God and Truck Coon. <laughs> I, I can take over the world. Every time I see those little trucks driving by in the city, I'm always like, take a picture for Brad. Take a picture for Brad. But I've never like had one had time to have a picture yet. <laughs> Every time I see them pass, I'm like, drive out in front of them. Wait, nope, that's not how that works. No, no, no. <laughs> We cannot guarantee. Look, we cannot if, guarantee the isekai. If you ever get a message from me saying I was in a car accident, you'll probably know what happened. <laughs> uh, are you like, it was a truck sama? Yeah, okay, fine. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking truck coon. It's, it's probably my fault. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Um, but yeah, so beach episode. Um, yes. Crazy powerful beach lady. And Lighthouse. Yeah. Also, they got their powers back for a minute because of a sword. And also, cheap. (laughs) Yes. Cheap. Cheap. Who then went back? Yeah. Goodbye, cheap. This is the most, like, (laughs) just out of fucking context way we can describe the show. But at the same time, it's like all I remember. I remember bits and pieces. And I'm sitting here having a fucking cackling fit over it because it's so fucking funny. (laughs) Yeah. Well, they're trying to collect all of these little shards. And one of them was in the sword that the cheap brought. And then the cheap cheap went away. But he kept the sword, but the shard remained. 
And in case you're wondering why we're just calling him Cheap, it's because, for one, I couldn't be fucking bothered to learn his name. But two, homie literally said Cheap after every fucking sentence. Yes. In the sub and the dub. And the sub or the dub just made it that much funnier. (laughs) Because it sounds so much more out of place dubbed. (laughs) You know what's funny is... I guess in the character description, they have his real, like, his human form, and I don't know who he is. I'm trying to find him, but I'm like, I don't know. Which? He's just a giant fucking bird. He's just a bird. Cheap. Cheap. Oh, cameo. Oh, that's funny, because he's a cameo. Yeah, that makes sense. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, so Bird cool. and the rest of the homies get sent back to into Isla, and then Mao and them get fucking... I don't even know what happened. It's like they came down from an LSD trip because all of a sudden the beach house was gone, but they had money floating down in front of them. Yeah, so it was like, she was like a guide of the dead or whatever, and it was like a one place where the dead could go and like hang out. And I'm assuming all of the people that were there were also the dead, even when we were seeing them alive. Yeah. But the more that they were there and the more power that they were using, um, it was taking their human forms away from them. So then they ended up just being like shadows of the dead. And then um, she was like, hey, you've got to go. You're too powerful. You're like destroying the people. So get out of here. And then um, magic happened in some form or another, and they got paid and left. Also, so this left me with a lot of questions, <clears throat> because this lady was Miss Me Kitty's, like, Mao and them's landlord's niece. Yeah. So who the fuck is Miss Me Kitty? Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. What sort of mythical bullshit powers does this lady have? Yeah. There's some fuckery afoot. There is some fuckery a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that's great i love that um yeah so then they go to a farm yeah turns out chiho's loaded yes or at least chiho's cousin is loaded yeah and then mao and them feel very out of place and this is another thing that tickled my funny bone so whenever they walk in and they're told to like go up the stairs and they're like their place is big enough to have stairs on the inside lucifer just look over at mao and he's like you better hurry up otherwise they'll see your poverty showing yeah and i was cackling it's not even the stairs are able to be shown from um the outside it's like you can't see the stairs from when you walk into the entrance yeah that's how you know they're rich the foyer Um, where you walk into is bigger than their entire apartment it's bigger than my entire apartment. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, so um, Emmy is also feeling really conflicted about the boys working on a farm, obviously because of her history with them and farms, considering they destroyed her land and at this point she believes killed her parents. Um, this is a fantastic reminder. Not just is this like a really good little small plot point. We learn a bit of more, a little bit more about Chiho. We get some character development between the guys. Um, but this is a really, really good point for them to remind the viewer of Emmy's relationship with them. And because at this point they've all been kind of buddy buddy, so you kind of forget in a way that they're enemies. Um, and this is the reminder of her origin story and of her complicated feelings on the matter, um, which sets you up for the rest of the season. Yes. Yeah. But so then Bear. Thieves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bear and Thieves. So, yeah, they almost get mauled by a bear. Yeah. But then also thieves that want to steal solar panels and watermelon. Yes. And uh, they're college students. They're dumb old college students that pee their pants when Emmy gets on fire. But then also the... (laughs) The fear that people have over the museum there that's about the spirits stealing souls from chocolate pockets. Yes. Gives Mao and them their powers back. So not only does Emmy punch a hole in a roof, but then Mao is also like, you guys are going to get it. You guys are going to get it. I I am the devil. Oh. Yeah. Um, 
I enjoyed this. This is also kind of another one of those re- reiterations of how Mao feels about being Satan. Um, it's kind of mentioned a couple of times throughout this season. Um, and I actually really like this this point that he has of demons are, in his mind, better than angels because of the fact that they accept their sin and they bear the consequences of that. Like, they know, they'll, they're willing to accept the consequences and they're, they're aware of them when they're making their sins and they, they live with them for the rest of their lives. Whereas what he is saying is that angels will do things regardless, like, um, like they will do things and disregard the consequences. They don't, they don't accept them. They'll continue their lives without feeling anything because they've done it in the name of justice. Whereas, um, the, de- the demons don't do it in the name of justice. They do it in the name of greed and selfishness, but they understand the, the consequences and accept those as opposed to just like doing it in greed and selfishness, but saying that you're doing it for justice and therefore not having to deal with repercussions. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's all depending upon... History is always written by the victor. Therefore, if the angels are the ones that are always winning, then they're always right. Yep, true. Final battle. Yeah! Mao and them win, and Gabriel's a bitch. (laughs) Honestly, the end. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh also Mal that. wants to buy a TV with his bonus money and Alciel's like but no too expensive Yeah. yeah. also it's fucking so Alciel and Emmy's co-worker whose name I can't remember get close also that whole fucking yeah. like date episode of yes. going to the fucking fair oh my god yeah oh I'm- and Chiho goes into a coma Oh, yeah, Chio does go into a coma before the final battle. Also, it's yeah. because of Emmy's mom that she goes into a coma. And then yeah. Emmy's mom, who we just see this season, is like, all right, I'm going to control Chiho and give Chiho powers. But also, I'm going to take them away, but also not. I'm very – I'm so glad season three got announced for next year because I have so many questions. <laughs> Yeah, specifically regarding Emmy and her parentage, I feel like that's going to be the most predominant point of season three. It was very well set up in this season. Yeah, because um, Emmy's dad is also alive, as we yeah. found out. Yeah, which is then causing huge internal conflict with her because it was her entire main purpose for revenge was to avenge her father, who is now alive. So here's the real question. Yeah. Is Homie actually alive? Yeah. I mean, tough question. And also, is he who she thought he was originally? If he was willing to just let his daughter, I mean, I, we don't know how willing yet, but at least somewhat willing to let his daughter go through all of the shit that she did by being basically stolen as an infant, you know, mm-hmm. um, forced into this this how the way she was raised and everything believing that he was dead and if i suppose we're supposed to believe now that he's kind of just like free roaming and doing his own shit now and didn't inform her that he was in fact still alive or has he been kept captive all this time somewhere you know Mm -hmm. because then he's kind of a dick yeah kind kind of very much a dick yeah so who's a bigger ship now mao and emmy or mao and chiho I think still Chiho. I think Emmy, I I kind of see her just being a single gal. <laughs> I don't know. I could uh, see it I going also, either way. Yeah, I also get the vibe of like Chiho being like young and having a crush, whereas Emmy and Mao I could see having more of an adult relationship, if that makes sense. Like honestly, I wanna see Chiho and Lucifer. Just because I feel like that dynamic would be hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Also, Arushihara is a lazy fuck. <laughs> yeah. Which that that it was the same in the fucking first season. So. <laughs> but then, who are we paying with Susano? Cheap. <laughs> Cheap. <laughs> Susano and Emmy. Throw out a wrench in your plans. I mean, it's fine either way. I don't care. Yeah. 
Susano, Emmy, and Chiho all have a, a, a three way. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Sure. Why not? Yeah. That's my ship. Those three. <laughs> Love it. Big fan. Yeah. Yeah. And then Mao with himself, but devil version versus human version. You know what? That's fine. I was going to say either that or Mao and his manager at McDonald's. Yes. Because and, dude at it, Sintucky yeah. Fried Chicken does not deserve happiness. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it starts off with them doing it as a fake thing. Um, Like, she needs a fake reason to get out of a date with him because he's not listening to her say no. So she's like, well, I'm going on a date with Mal and we're dating each other. We love each other very much. And then she's like, oh, shit. Now I have to actually, like, follow through with this because he's stalking me. And then Mal's like, okay, I'll just go with it. And then before you know it, they've been doing that for five years and are married. Yeah, this is this is literally a fucking plot to a rom com, guaranteed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Somewhere, somehow, this is a rom com plot. Yeah. Which, and then twenty five of... years down the line, Mal's gonna turn to her and be like, "So, are we still like joking about this, or, or, or are we actually like together?" They have kids together, like outside <laughs> yeah, of Alice yeah, Roberts, yeah. like they have actual kids together, and it's like, yeah. So, are we done with this charade? Or, <laughs> or... <laughs> can I like? consider you my wife now <laughs> <laughs> like shouldn't i propose shouldn't like I, like are we pulls out a grenade pin parents? yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's so dumb <laughs> <laughs> and then you just look outside and he's still in the bushes just watching him <laughs> <laughs> he's old got gray hair and a beard yeah. like he's so disheveled <laughs> Yeah. Still out there with flowers, too. Like, flowers and a bucket of chicken. Just, yeah. baby, come back. <laughs> uh, I like this story so better. Can, can we get in yeah. touch with the writers, please? Yeah, let's go with this. Oh, So, what do you rate it? The actual version, not our made-up version. Not our, our made-up version is an 11 out of 10. That's Yeah, 100%. I'm down with it. Fuck yeah. it. Yeah, um, I'm sticking kind of solid with everyone else. I'm feeling like a, like a six point five to a seven, is, excuse me, I'm just dying for a second. Um, six point five to a seven is kind of where I'm at. Mm-hmm. Where are you? Eight and a half. I should have known. I should have known. It was great, actually. You know what? For the double loan, nine and a half. I fucking giggled my ass off over so much of the shit. <laughs> Ah, I knocked the pop shield. Fucking chocolate pocket. <laughs> Fucking Chiho's dad picking up the phone to talk to his brother and sounding like a fucking hip teenager. <laughs> <laughs> Episode one, just all in and of its own. Fine, I'll give it a seven. <laughs> <laughs> My issues oh. are small things that I just think it just like if I'm comparing it to the best of the best the best of the best anime that we have covered so far here on the show, the things that it just doesn't take it right up to the edge is that um it just needs a little bit of cleaning up here and there on the animation of both the characters' faces. I'm talking about consistency here, like I don't mind the style change. I'm just finding that in some shots versus other shots, I'm seeing differences in character drawing that is taking me out of the viewing experience because i'm going oh the face looks different there all the eyes look off you know something is out of proportion a little bit different and it was enough to make me actually notice it whilst watching so Mm -hmm. um that's one thing um another thing would be that um sometimes it was losing my attention a little bit on certain parts um that could have just been an I'm an, I'm tired and have ADHD thing. It could also just be that, you know, things could have been edited down more. I find that's the main reason as to why I, I lose attention sometimes is that it just needs somebody to go through and just edit and just cut off a second here or a half a second here or, you know, just tiny little things to clean things up will mm-hmm. help massively in, in keeping someone's attention. Yeah. Um, and then... Uh, yeah, I think that's kind of everything, really. They're just those little things that are just just cleaning things up here and there. Very small touches and changes um, can make a huge difference on a show like this. Hmm. Yeah. So it sounds to me like an eight. Uh, 
I thought there was a third thing. There. Oh. No, nah, because the OP and ED no. were a bop. They were on brand. We they weren't have... the best thing ever, but they were they were good. They were on brand with the first season. Yeah, so we have our OP is With by Minami Kuribayashi and uh, Suikyo no Sekai by Marina Horu, Hor- Horuichi. Excuse me for butchering that for the ED. Um, yeah, and... I thought they were fine. I skipped them every time I do that. Nah, they were good. Yeah, they they did the job. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Also, shout out to Chiho's nan. Oh yeah, ladies of fucking beast getting gored and head butting a boar and being like, "Fuck you, I win." <laughs> And also just, like, casually knowing that they're from another realm and just being like, I'm chill with it. Yeah, it's fine. Everything's fine. Yeah. Um, which also leaves me with open questions about Chiho because it seemed like her cousin also knew shit was up. And I'm wondering if in third season that's going to be expanded as well. I feel like that's probably why I'm sticking in a seven as opposed to an eight. Is A, a lot of this season feels like it's set up for next season as opposed to storyline for this season, if that makes sense. After you watch the dub, get back to me on your rating. Okay, fair. Right now it's a seven. <laughs> we will see if it changes. Um, I will let you guys know. But I'm very curious about the third season. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited for it as well. So we will see. We will see. Yes, I'm... that all you got? Because I think that's all I got. That's all I got. I've rambled enough. All right. So thank you all so much for listening. Blue and I greatly appreciate it. We have things to plug, like Blue's Instagram and Twitter at Blue Lavender STM. She also has an Etsy shop if you want a fancy bookmark. Yeah. It's Etsy.com slash Blue Lavender Crafts. It, it, it do be that. And Brad has things that you can find him on too. For more information, check out Brad Carter Gaming on Twitch and Instagram. Uh, he also has a TikTok where he may or may not in the future possibly post short form content on D and D like D and D out of context. Yeah. Possibly. It may be a thing, it may not. Don't get your hopes up. Who um, knows? I am I'm very bad whenever it comes to doing shit. Yeah, me too. And um yeah. Uh, com where you can find all of our episodes previously archived as well as other shit so enjoy that YouTube channel BNB Anime socials BNB Anime have fun YouTube videos will commence after I finish getting the video assets made again because I'm literally having to rebuild everything from scratch because your boy lost everything. <laughs> yeah, and Spy Family will resume ASAP as well. Uh, shit, life happened, computers failed, my parents came to visit. It was a whole fun time. But we'll we'll get back to it, we promise. Yeah, or we will. That, that will just become a thing in general. Because I again I lost everything, so we're, yes. we're we'll get there, or you might just get Spy Family th- in January. Yeah, because um, January is going to be here before we know it. <laughs> Honestly, this year by year by has gone so fast. Yeah, I mean it. It's already fucking the second week of November. Like holy shit! I know. <sighs> Thanksgiving's around the corner, and I got to smoke a turkey. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I I was thinking like a roll up cigarette a turkey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've been smoking turkeys for years. I've been smoking turkeys for years. Chocolate. You're still on that nicotine to shit, my guy. You're old school. <laughs> Hit up a you, turkey. You, you haven't progressed. Turkeys are where it's at. <laughs> Oh, uh, this is why you stick to the end of these episodes because you get bullshit like this. You get bullshit. Yeah. Also, you get to week. find out what we're doing. Oh, well, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> you beat me to it. I did. So next week we've got a brand new anime original called Cyberpunk Edge Runners. It is a very interesting anime. I started it and then dropped it due to I knew I wanted to cover it on the podcast. I wanted to make sure everything is very fresh and i wanted like a clean outlook on it because this has been recommended to me by several people and the several people that have 
recommended it to me are all on like different ends of the anime spectrum. We've got new people, old people, and everywhere in between. But everybody that has recommended it to me to watch has given it a 10 out of 10 and said that they have cried. Interesting. Okay, so if you guys want to watch it before we cover it, you can find it on Netflix. Yay! It's ten episodes, so it's not that hard of a binge. In fact, the next three shows we are going to cover are all available on Netflix. So be sure to check them out kind of as we get to them. But yeah, Cyberpunk Edge Runners. but until then, we'll catch y'all next time. Love you. Goodbye.